Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia, which means low platelets, is associated with a variety of conditions. Thrombocytopenia is defined as a platelet count below the lower limit of normal, which is less than 150,000 microliters or less than 150,000 um, cubic millimeters. Platelets are produced in the bone marrow from megakaryocyte. Each megakaryocyte produces 1,000 to 5,000 platelets. Platelets play a key role in hemostasis, forming a temporary plug. Therefore, if you have low platelets, you are unable to form a temporary plug and tend to bleed more easily. In order to understand platelet function, we need to revise hemostasis. Hemostasis involves three main phases, vasoconstriction, platelet plug formation, and coagulation. When there's injury to the blood vessel, vasoconstriction occurs to reduce blood flow and therefore reduce blood loss. Platelets, red blood cells, and other clotting factors, including von Willebrand factors, are circulating in the blood. The second step in hemostasis is platelet plug formation, where platelets bind onto the exposed collagen in the injured vessel with the help of von Willebrand factor. Zooming into the area, on the right is the lumen of the blood vessel, the endothelial lining, collagen layer, smooth muscle cells. There are three main steps in the formation of the temporary platelet plug. Adhesion. This is where platelets bind onto exposed collagen with the help of von Willebrand factor and then become activated. Here you can see platelet and von Willebrand factor binding onto the exposed collagen. The second is platelet activation. The activated platelets release thromboxin A2 and ADP to recruit more platelets. So here you can see the platelets releasing ADP and thromboxin A2, which in turn will activate and recruit more platelets. This will lead to platelet aggregation. Thromboxin A2 and ADP recruits more platelets, which in turn recruits more and more platelets, forming the temporary platelet plug. Platelets do not adhere or aggregate to the healthy endothelium because the healthy endothelial tissues release nitric oxide and prostacyclins. These chemicals prevent platelets to aggregate onto these healthy cells. After the temporary platelet plug is formed, the last part of hemostasis occurs called coagulation. Coagulation occurs when clotting factors become activated following a series of clotting cascades, which will eventually activate clotting factor 2, known as prothrombin to thrombin. Activated thrombin then activates fibrinogen to form fibrin. Fibrin, which is clotting factor 1, will form the fibrin mesh. Vasoconstriction, platelet plug formation, and coagulation completes hemostasis. After the tissue heals, the fibrin is slowly cleared up and a new lining of endothelial tissue is formed. It therefore makes sense that if someone has thrombocytopenia, hemostasis is disrupted and the formation of the temporary platelet plug is not so good. Clinically, features such as easy bruising, TKA, and even bleeding of the gums and poor wound healing can occur if platelet levels are low enough. Platelets are produced in the bone marrow by megakaryocytes, which are derived from the multipotent hematopoietic progenitor cells from the myeloid lineage. Thrombopoiesis is stimulated by thrombopoietin and inflammation such as from cytokines into leukin-6. When the megakaryocytes are formed in the bone marrow, eventually they will release and produce each about 1,000 to 5,000 platelets. When platelets are new, they are known to be sialylated. They contain sialic acid on their surface. Platelets enter circulation. At least one third of platelets are actually sequestered in the spleen at any one time. Platelets actually live for about seven days before being cleared up by the body. When platelets age or become damaged, their morphology changes. For example, they become decellulated and need to be cleared up by the body.
The clearance of platelets occur in the reticuloendothelial system, such as in the liver and the spleen. Platelets are removed by monocytes of the reticuloendothelial system, also known as a mononuclear phagocyte system. Using this simple diagram of the platelet's life cycle, we can categorize and understand how thrombocytopenia occur. Many conditions can cause thrombocytopenia. Let's look at some of these. One possible mechanism is through reduced production of platelets, such as in bone marrow disorders, such as bone marrow failure and acute leukemia, malignancy through bone marrow infiltration, Alcohol can actually directly induce bone marrow toxicity, reducing production of megakaryocytes and hence platelets. All of, these, all of these causes essentially will lead to disruption in thrombopoiesis. Another cause of thrombocytopenia is where the platelets are all used up. This is called platelet consumption. This occurs in conditions such as disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, thrombotic microangiopathy, such as in thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome, which are also important causes of hemolytic anemia. Another cause of uh, platelet consumption is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia occurs when the anticoagulant heparin is administered. Heparin binds with a platelet factor, which is produced by the platelets, forming a heparin platelet factor complex. This triggers the immune system to make antibodies against the heparin platelet factor complex. When the antibodies bind onto this complex, it stimulates platelet activation and aggregation. This means increased platelet consumption, resulting in thrombocytopenia. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia requires administration of heparin, and the effects typically occur four to five days after the administration of heparin. Splenomegaly is another cause of thrombocytopenia. Approximately one-third of platelets are sequestered in the spleen or reside in the spleen to maintain normal circulating platelet numbers. Conditions that increase the spleen size, therefore, can reduce platelets' number in circulation. Causes of splenomegaly include portal hypertension, secondary to liver disease, and Felty syndrome, such as seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Another cause of thrombocytopenia is dilutional causes from massive fluid resuscitation, which can reduce the number of platelets in circulation temporarily. Another category of thrombocytopenia can be due to increase in platelet destruction. Platelets survive in circulation for about seven days, after which they are removed by monocytes and macrophages of the reticuloendothelial system, such as the liver and the spleen. Some conditions accelerate platelet destruction, as well as megakaryocyte destruction, including idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP. ITP can be primary or secondary to rheumatological conditions, such as SLE. ITP occurs when antibodies attack platelets, increasing the clearance rates. Drug-induced ITP is also important to remember. Important to note that a variant of ITP can include the antibodies attacking the megakaryocytes in the bone marrow, which means less platelet production. Finally, infection is another very important cause of thrombocytopenia, which occurs through a number of mechanisms via ITP, so immune-mediated, bone marrow suppression, as well as platelet consumption. Clinical features of thrombocytopenia include skin changes, which are probably the most important finding. These include purpura and petechiae, mucosal bleeding. Depending on the cause of the thrombocytopenia, you can have lymphadenopathy, if the cause is infective, splenomegaly and hepatomegaly, if there is portal hypertension or even malignancy. Important to know that the difference in presentation between someone, also you have the constitutional symptoms, of course, such as fever, loss of appetite, which could mean infective or it could mean malignant. I hope you enjoyed this video on thrombocytopenia. Thank you.